Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be doing another design based off of a famous TV show or movie. So let's take a look and figure out which one. Here. What is this? Sploosh, that's what I call it. Drink it, it's good. If you recognize that clip, you'll know it's from the movie Holes. And we're gonna be doing some packaging design for the spiced peaches that Stanley and Zero found inside that old wooden boat in the desert called Sploosh. And this idea was actually given by one of you guys. So if you do have a movie or TV show or video game that you'd like to see me design something from, make sure to leave a comment and I'll definitely check those out. And for our project today, how I imagine this going is that way back in the day before old Shia LaBeouf spent all his time fighting giant robots, him and Zero found this big stash of sploosh and that gave them a good business idea. They realized that there was a lot of history around this product because it was made by the famous Kiss and Kate Barlow. And so what they decided to do was repackage these spice peaches and bring them to market. And it's up to us to make a killer packaging design for them. The first thing we'll need to decide is what type of label we want on this jar. As I've said several times before, I'm a big fan of showing as much of the product as possible in these types of situations. So instead of wrapping the label around the entire jar, maybe we could just have a smaller label that just takes up the front. And since we'll probably be dealing with a lot of text, I'm gonna take this over into Illustrator. Now as for the content on the package, we're obviously gonna want the name of the product. And since a lot of people may not know what sploosh is straight off the bat, it'd be a good idea to let them know that it's just spiced peaches. But it's not just any spiced peaches. These peaches have actually been aged for over 100 years sitting in the desert. And to really help drive that point home, I think we should put some type of image of a peach on here. And now we can start laying this content out on the package. Since our label is larger at the top, I think that would be the perfect place to put the logo. That way it can be nice and big right in the center of the package. And if we're gonna have this peach image, I think that should go pretty close to the name Sploosh. That way we'll draw a really clear connection between the name and the actual peaches. We'll probably put our spiced peaches text somewhere at the bottom. That way it's the last thing that people see. And if they didn't quite understand what the product is when they see the word Sploosh or the peach image, they've got a fail safe right down at the bottom. It's spiced peaches. And finally, we wanna make sure we draw a clear connection between the peaches and the fact that they're aged 100 years. So we'll probably put those pretty close together. As for the actual branding of this product, I feel like that Stanley and Hector would really wanna play off its history. So originally, these peaches were actually canned way back in the 1800s by Kate Barlow. So making the label look like it's actually from that time period could really help us sell the story and elevate this beyond just simple peaches. And back in those days, they didn't have good old Photoshop to help them out with their graphic design. And so that means everything was done by hand. So I think we'll wanna make this look like it was all hand illustrated. We'll definitely wanna use some of those iconic Western style fonts. And a lot of designs during that time period were actually fairly complex, so we don't have to worry about keeping this too simple. So to kick things off, let's go ahead and get started with the logo. I rounded up a few Western style fonts that might work as a pretty good base for the logo. And out of these three, I actually think that the top two would probably work better because since this bottom one is so wide, we're not gonna have that much area being taken up by the logo, so it doesn't stand out very much. Whereas if we used one of these top ones, for example, when we stretch it out to fit the width of the label, you can see we have a lot more space taken up by that logo, which means it'll be super easy to see. And it'll likely be the first thing people's eyes are drawn to. Between these two fonts though, I actually kind of like this bottom one better. It just feels like it has some more character to me, but I actually do like the thickness of this other font. So we can give this one a little more heft by stretching it out horizontally. So like I said, if we want this to feel very Western-y, most likely this peach image is actually gonna be an illustration and it'll probably take up some type of circular space in the middle. And that actually works out really well because one thing in Western design that you'll notice is that a lot of times on titles like this, they would warp the letters to where the tops all lined up, but then they would pull the bottoms down so they kind of arched around something. And since we are gonna have that peach in the middle, I think we should pull our letters down to arch around that. And back in those days as well, it seems like everybody was just obsessed with putting things inside of boxes. So you'll see some designs from that time period that have boxes around every piece of text possible, and it really helps to give it a certain aesthetic. And quite often, these boxes would actually have multiple layers to them. So for example, we'd have one thick box, and then around that, we'd have a thinner box. So in the best case scenario, our peach illustration would fill in most of the space beneath our logo. And that just means we probably won't want to stick a single peach straight in the middle, because that'll just leave too much empty space around it. And the other interesting thing is that when you draw a peach in kind of a simplistic style, a lot of times it's hard to tell what it actually is. It could get confused for an apple or an orange or something similar. And really, the thing that actually makes it look like a peach is 
is on the inside, and that would be the peach's pit. It's kind of that nut looking thing in the center of it, and that's actually kind of the most iconic part of the fruit. So to help strengthen our visual, I think we should definitely show a whole peach, but alongside that, I think we could show a second peach that's cut in half so we can see that pit. Now we could put them like this side by side, but I almost feel like one is just overpowering the other. So instead of showing those both straight on, maybe we could show this peach in more of a side view. And that definitely fits that oval shape a lot better now. And to fill in this last little gap, I think we can just move this leaf over. And doing that will actually make this peach look like it's rotated on its side, which makes this the bottom. So we're gonna have a stem somewhere right around here. And like I mentioned, we really wanna tie in this aged 100 years text to our actual peaches. So to help make it feel like these are one unit, I'm just gonna wrap the text around them. And as for font, we definitely want something that has a Western vibe to it. And we also want it to be a little wider and not so tall. That way it better fills in this space. And of course, the last thing we have is our spiced peaches at the bottom. And I think what we could do here is actually give it a container that mirrors the one on the top. That way, both of those will kind of frame our illustration in the middle and that should help draw more attention to it. And instead of just making this container another rectangle, I think we could actually have it follow the edges of the label. I don't think we can mirror this look exactly though, because we're not gonna have too much room for our actual text inside of here. So instead of having this double line around our container, maybe we could just have this outer single line and we could turn this inside piece completely solid. And I actually think this makes for a really nice contrast between our title box, because it almost seems like these are the inverse of each other. And I chose a pretty bold font for that. That way it would take up a lot of this inner space and this black area wouldn't feel too overwhelming compared to everything else. And just like our sploosh text fills in most of its container, I'd like this text down here to fill in a lot of this black area as well. So I'll just scale that up. And just like we did up here, we can stretch these letters to where they better fit their container. I'm gonna add some extensions onto these outer letters to help better fill in these two spaces. At this point, we're definitely wrapping up, but we do have these two empty spots right here on either side of the illustration. And I'd like to fill those in with something. And one thing that you'd find pretty commonly on a lot of old Western designs is the date of establishment, which is basically just the date that the company got started. So for us, we could use the date that Hector and Stanley started this company, but these peaches were actually made by Kate back in 1888. So since that's when the product was started, that's gonna be our establishing date. It's pretty common to represent established in this format, but another way it can be done is is by writing ESTD. And the advantage of doing that in this case is that it gives us four letters over here and four numbers over here, and that means the whole thing is perfectly balanced. Now, the very last thing I'd like to put in here is some type of reference to kissing Kate Barlow. Not only is she the person that actually made the peaches, but she's actually pretty central to this story, and it's likely that people that buy this would buy it because they know of her. And I think a good way to include her in there is to put her name right at the top so we can show people that this is kissing Kate's product. Now, I don't really like the two apostrophes in this, so I'm actually gonna change this to a G. That way the language is a little more clear and we won't get that repetition. As far as where to put this, I actually think we could do something very similar to this spiced peaches container by shrinking down the name, moving it over top of this line, adding a black box behind it, and then turning that text white. And not only will that mirror our bottom part down here, but it'll also really help to separate it from the logo. I think that's pretty much got it for our base design, but I still wanna make this feel a little more hand-drawn, so I'm actually gonna transfer this into Procreate, and I'll make a few adjustments by hand. Right off the bat, a lot of these boxes are too perfect, so I'm gonna lower the opacity of those, and then I'll just trace over top of them, and that'll give it a really hand-painted look. And now I think I'm just gonna get rid of this texture in our logo. I think there's actually a pretty good opportunity here to add a little flair to these letters. For example, I think we could add a little tail on this H. And now to balance that out, I'm gonna add a swish on the left side of the logo somewhere around the S. And I tried to make that roughly the same size of tail as the H, that way everything would balance out. Now some of these letters in the logo feel a little bit thin to me, so I'm gonna beef them up a bit. Another pretty common thing back in the old days was to try to make your letters look 3D or almost like they had a shadow. And you can mimic that effect by adding outlines on certain sides of the letters. Just like I did on this S right here, I added the outlines only to the left-hand side and to the bottom of the letter. And I'll just repeat that style across the whole logo. It looks like the last thing we need to do is finish off this peach illustration. So I'm gonna kind of use an old timey cross hatching style. I think it'll look pretty cool, but we'll see how it goes. And 
And now that that's done, I'm just gonna clean this up some, and I'm gonna put it back into Photoshop so we can make a really cool presentation. And in order to really give this a Western vibe, I think we need to make the label look like it's made of old weathered paper. So I'm gonna start with this paper texture and just apply that to the label. And instead of having all this text black, I think a dark brown would match better. So I definitely like to give this more of a weathered look. So I'm gonna take a textured brush and then go over some of these spots to look like they've been worn away. I'll also stick on a rust texture and change that blending mode to soft light, and that'll give our paper a little bit of a grunge effect. Now, if this really was an old Western product that you just maybe found in the desert, this label would definitely be peeling off by this point. Especially around the edges, we'd see some wrinkles and tearing, and there would definitely be parts of this that would be peeling away from the jar. So we can go ahead and add in some roughness just by making this not so perfect. And surprisingly, it's not that hard to simulate this paper raising up from the glass. All we need to do is pick a color that's lighter than the label. And if you can imagine this paper peeling up, we can paint the top of that, and then we can paint a shadow right underneath it. And if we zoom out, you can see how that paper looks like it's just curled off of that glass. I'm gonna do that in a couple more places just to add some balance. As far as the type of scene we can put this in, I think it makes sense to put it in the same place that Hector and Stanley found it originally, which was the desert. I think this dark texture will work pretty nice for that, and we can try to make it look like this was laying on the ground just waiting for somebody to find it. It looks like our lighting is coming from the left-hand corner, and so that means our jar is going to cast a shadow somewhere in this bottom right area. And of course, that means the jar is going to be darker on this right-hand side. And that also means we'll get some light on the left-hand side of the jar. So one way we could help combine the jar with the background a little more is to maybe make the jar look like it's partially buried. So I think having this dirt behind here really helps bring the scene to life because it almost looks like somebody came and dug up the jar. We'll color match this dirt with the other dirt and we can just fade out the edges a bit. That way it blends in better with the background. To help reinforce the idea that this jar was actually buried in the ground, we can mask away part of the jar. That way it looks like dirt is coming over top of it. And of course, having the jar buried will affect some of our lighting. So I'm gonna to try to make it look like the jar is resting inside of a slight indentation in the ground. And I'll also add some lighting to these mounds of dirt to make them look a little more 3D. And to help make this look a little more realistic, I'll add some contact shadows where the dirt is touching the jar. And if the jar has been sitting underground for quite some time, it's definitely gonna have a lot of dust and dirt on it. So I'm gonna add some dust texture to this. And I'll probably just add several of these just to make it look as realistic as possible. And to add some thicker dirt to this, we can just use a texture brush and paint over that. I'll paint over that new dust with some different colors to better match these different areas of the jar. So I think this is looking pretty cool right now, but the scene as a whole feels a bit empty to me. And you guys know that I love to add props to things, so I'm thinking maybe we should add a few items here that helps tell the story of holes. The first thing I think we could add is an old piece of wood, and that'll help us represent that Sploosh was actually found in that old abandoned boat in the middle of the desert. We want to place that maybe off to the side, that way it doesn't take up too much attention from the main subject. And we want to make sure there's a good amount of texture showing on that, so you can actually tell it's wood. And if you've watched the movie Holes, you'll definitely remember the yellow spotted lizards. They were basically bearded dragons, but if they bit you, you pretty much die. Those critters were found all over the desert, so why don't we add one here? I found this little guy, and I think he'll work perfectly. And I think we'll probably want to sit him somewhere in the upper right hand corner. That way he's not too distracting from the rest of the scene, and it also helps us balance things out with the wood plank. I'm gonna get just part of his tail showing, and I'm gonna duplicate him, and then try to position that foot somewhere in the scene because I really think that's a dead giveaway for what this is. And I actually think I'd like to have this tail wrap back around into the scene. So to do that, I'll make another copy of our lizard, and then we can use the puppet warp tool and place some pins in that tail, and then curl it however we like. Now our lizard man blends in a little too much with the background, and actually in the movie, they were a bit more yellow than this, so let's give him some color. And of course, both of our new objects need some shading and lighting. And I think that's pretty much got our scene done. I'm gonna do a few finishing tweaks and a little bit of color grading, and that'll wrap things up. And guys, here's our final result. 
I hope you really enjoyed this video because I had a great time making it. I'm really liking this series so far and I hope you are too. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that because I know you don't want to miss the next one of these, do you? If you do have a suggestion from a movie, a TV show, or a video game that you'd like me to design something from, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. And it would really help me out if you guys shared this with other people. Post it to your Facebook or Twitter or wherever you're at. Let people know you enjoyed it and you think they will too. Don't forget to give this video a like and you can watch some more of my stuff right here. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.